What is going on guys? Twitchy Tango here and today we're doing something a bit different. If you could see by the title, I read Jedi Battle Scars so you don't have to. If you don't know, Jedi Battle Scars is a companion novel to the sequel Fallen Order Jedi Survivor and sort of uh, can give you an idea where everybody's going to be at at the start of Survivor. And uh, I wanted to talk about it today, uh, a few things. I had a strong first half. And about the second half of the book is where it just sort of falls apart and it becomes a slug to read. Which, uh, nothing against Sam Mag's writing. She did the best with what she had. I don't think it was terrible for the most part. I think it was somewhat enjoyable. But uh, second half of the book, which we'll talk about, sort of just fell apart. Uh, but I kind of wanted to talk about it uh, because, you know, Jedi Survivor is right around the corner. I got another Jedi Fallen Order video I'm going to talk about. Uh, it's one I feel like is a big topic that we should be discussing more as we go into survivor but uh jedi battle scars is a companion novel prequel to jedi survivor follows the mantis crew years after the event a few years after the events of fallen order and they're sort of doing these smash and grab hit and run operations against the empire hoping to make a dent grease by the way is still the goat he is that guy everybody wants to be more like han or luke or lando i want to be more like that four-armed man grease he is just an outstanding individual he is a fantastic uh fellow and i love him but that being said let's talk about it the first part of the book involves uh, the mantis crew striking into the heart of the hexian brood you know the hexian brood bounty hunters that capture um uh, cal and then they essentially destroy their base of operations crippling them but in the process of doing so they come across this stormtrooper known as fret who has precious information that can really help them out and uh, she also becomes entangled and uh, infatuated and uh, her and Marin become uh, in love, I guess. They become lovers. They get emotion rom romantically involved. And uh, that's sort of a big, I wouldn't say a big focus of the story, but it really takes a good portion of it. Uh, and uh, I don't think it's bad, but I feel like relegating Marin to this sort of love sick, love, love six, love sick puppy was just not doing it for me because uh, I think she's a fantastic character. I did like uh, we got to see a little insight about some why the the Mantis crew is doing what they're doing. Um, Marin obviously is probably a big focus of the story. Uh, she's either bisexual, I think she's bisexual, but again, uh, I was just making her lovesick puppy was just not doing it for me i think she's a great character we did find out more insight once she joined the mantis crew uh she wants to take her revenge on the empire since she can't take it, her revenge on the separatists for destroying death Amir and taking her family from her grease is just wanting to stop doing this all together and on a bar which we obviously know he does in survivor siri wants to create knowledge and sort of a library for future jedi and those who come after them and cal just wants to keep going as long as he can uh but the first half of the book is pretty strong they take out the majority of the hexian brood they come uh they come across the stormtrooper who turns out to be an imperial analyst fret and they, and th she in turns, uh, brings them to Quiris Lar. He is an Amwadi, which you don't know the Amwadi or this massive kind of, uh, bird creature. Think like big bird, but uh, more colorful. And so it, they set them on this path to go to this planet. I believe it's called, um, Marquana, where there is this uh, device they're looking for called a shroud which is the big focus of the story it's this is sort of a heist mission so to speak uh and and that's what it is essentially when it comes down to it they're seeking out uh the the shroud and it will essentially help them uh stay invisible it'll help them be quiet throughout uh throughout the galaxy while the empire is in power and uh it's essentially could help them be more effective against the empire but also the empire is going after it and of course this is where uh the inquisitorious squad comes in and the fifth brother shows up you know that guy this guy the fifth brother wait what happened to him again
Yeah, that guy who bit the big one and gets ma- maul on Malachor 5. It's Malachor 4. Malachor. Malachor. Uh, yeah, that guy. We already know how his story ends. It doesn't mean he can't cause chaos before then, but essentially uh, the Empire wants the Shroud because it could help them really take out these rebel insurgents that are appearing across the galaxy because they love their order, dadgummit. And, uh, well, the first, like I said, the first half of the book is really strong. It sets it up quite nightly. They make it to the planet of Merkana Hana. I'm saying that horribly wrong. And we they get in the process of going into the prison. And lo and behold, Fred, a person who has been, uh, her and Marin have been getting really close together and uh, being romantically involved, has lied. And that's sort of where it starts getting off the rails because once they get to the prison and start causing chaos, they go to the prison room with the shroud. Lo and behold, the shroud is not a data chip like they were led to believe. It is a person. And this is where we get into the big reveal that Fritz uh, the, had a bigger connection to the creation of the Shroud than was originally intended. The creator of the Shroud was actually Fred's former lover and a Force-sensitive and was being held captive by the Empire until the Inquisitor squad could pick her up. And that's sort of where it falls off the rails. It just sort of goes spiraling out of control. It gives us some good character moments for Grease and Marin. Uh, Marin uh, has shows her showcases her ability. She sort of gets her stronger connection to her magic back, which she had been struggling with since leaving Dathomir. She's able to sort of resurrect uh, dead people and use them at her disposal, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, my big thing is like, relegating her to sort of this love six puppy was just not it for me i did like we find out how grease loses his arm he loses his arm trying to protect cal uh before grease loses his arm cal and siri are facing the fifth brother and they're getting on the defensive and then somehow they get distracted cal gets cal gets knocked unconscious and Siri is trying to persuade the fifth brother to go come back to the light. Of course, it doesn't work. Grease shows up. It distracts Siri and gives fifth brother a chance to try and kill Cal. And Grease puts his, one of his arms in front of the lightsaber and loses his arm. And then uh, later into the book, like a few pages, chapter or so later, uh, their entire crew comes to a head. And uh, we sort of get an idea why everybody's doing what they're doing. Of course, Marin wants to take her aggression and anger out on the Empire since she can't go after the Separatists because they're gone for taking her family. Uh, we find out Siri wants to keep create the knowledge, uh, create a library of sorts knowledge for those who come after them. Cal just wants to keep fighting until he can't fight no more. And Grace is, is kind of getting tired of it. He wants to just call it a day and just retire somewhere <clears throat> and uh as far as books go i don't think it's truly terrible but i think i just it just i think it was going too fast and doing too much and you know the first half was arguably pretty strong i thought it was pretty great and then the second half just sort of falls apart uh essentially the ending of the book falls them going back <clears throat> to chorus He's betraying them. They set up a plan in motion uh, to deal with that. The fifth brother shows up because uh, I believe her name is Eerie. Uh, freak, I can't even think of her name. Uh, the creator of the Shroud. And uh, she, uh, Eer- I think her name's Eerie. Yeah, Eerie is a... Uh, been tracked by the empire because of course they weren't going to let this person go without finding her and uh a big exclamation happens the query queerus dies and uh, they get away from the fifth brother a fifth brother i guess assumes that they're dead now because there was a big explosion that went off in queerus's uh facility his building uh so yeah it just it Sort of went off the rails at the end. I don't think it's a bad book, but it definitely could have been better. I definitely, I'd say a six out of ten on my part. I did like we sort of got insight to a lot of these characters. 
you know, why they do what they do. I really, again, I really like Marin, but I feel like just making her sort of this lovesick puppy was just not it. Uh, I like that she got a deeper connection back to her magic. We love seeing the inside and why she does what she does, why she joined the Mantis crew. I thought it was pretty great. Uh, understanding why Cal keeps doing what he's doing. Still, Cal's a great guy. Grease is still the definitive goat. He is that guy. He is the best. But all in all, I I don't know. I think it could be better. Um, definitely can't wait for Survivor this week. Expect to see Survivor content on the channel. But that's kind of it. That's the video. I love you all. I'll see you all in the next one. Take it easy.